Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today I've been called out to have a look at this red-tailed catfish. It's got some sort of fuzziness to the eyes. So we're going to check it out to, to work out what exactly is happening. As a part of routine, we always do water quality testing. And what we found is that this tank has been set up for about a month or so. And we're looking at new tank syndrome. So we've got uh, ammonia at about one milligram per litre. Nitrite at about 2 milligrams per litre, nitrate at about 25 mg per litre, pH sitting at neutral at 7.0 and the alkalinity is at 3 degrees. And so at the moment what I'm thinking is that the cycling, biological processes for the biofilter is occurring because we do have uh, both nitrite as, and ni as well as nitrate being produced. Uh, but we're sort of at the second stage where nitrite is becoming toxic. Uh, what I believe happened to these uh, red-tailed catfish is that it suffered ammonia burns previously. It would have been higher than at one milligram per liter despite um, constant uh, fairly regular water changes. So the ammonia is actually a direct cell toxin. It will burn the tissues. I've seen lots of fish with uh, skin ulcers, fraying fins, and I believe that the, there's a damage to the cornea of the eye. And secondary to that, um, damaged uh, epithelium over the eye, and we're getting sort of saprolagnia or fungal infection setting in. So what we're gonna do here for this particular patient, we're gonna sedate him, have a look at see what sort of damage has been happened to the eye and see if we can rescue the eye by just some gentle debridement and topical um, antiseptic together with some antibiotics. And the other part of here, of what's happening in this um, pond as well, is that it's got a, a nitrite issue uh, sitting at two milligrams per liter. That's pretty toxic. So what we want to do is we want to increase the pH so that will reduce the uh, toxic nitric acid um, form of, of nitrite. And uh, we're also going to add some salt uh, we're just going to use some aquarium salt and this will competitively inhibit the uptake of nitrite uh, rendering the nitrite that's in there less uh, toxic. Also what's happening here is that the owner is going to do some fairly major water changes as well and that um, is the thing where aquaculture say dilution is the solution to pollution so uh, we're going to do that as well. So after the water change we're going to add the bits and pieces. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to catch up our patient, put him in our um, anesthetic bath. Um, the anesthetic bath hasn't been prepared yet. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put him in there um, and let him get rid of whatever ammonia and nitrite that's in his system. Once that's done, we'll add the anesthetic into there. Okay. Maybe so like ammonia burn leaves? Maybe, yeah. It's probably some damage to the eyes. Right, so in the transfer of him into here, you can see that uh, one of these bits of infected tissue has come off. And that sort of fluffy appearance to it is pretty classic for saprolegnia. So put that down the microscope just to show you what that looks like in a, in a while. And you can see here, um, right here there's a bit of redness on the opercular membrane. Yeah. And some redness. So what I'll do is I'll add some antibiotics into this water as well um, and then that way he'll absorb it and then I'll add the um, fish bandage over the top and then later on whatever antibiotic that's in the solution will sort of absorb and stay um, on this on fish skin. That's the antibiotic that we add in there. Yeah. Um, 
All right, so initially I guess what we'll do is we'll have a look. You can see it's a bit of redness around here on its back. Um, and you can see in between the, the gill uh, membranes, it's really ulcerated and red. Uh, this one here is just from, likely from transport. Uh, but you can see down here, it's been just sitting on there, but you've got ulcerations there as well. Um, and on the ventral fin. Okay. Just go around. So it's, I guess in the in between the folds of the gills. All right. So what we're gonna do? Um, this left eye has already the growth uh, of fungal infection has come off, uh, and it's looking quite good. I think it's looking quite promising for that side. And we're just gonna have a look at the right eye. So we can remove that. That just peels off. And it's a bit of ulceration there. Oops. Here we're examining under the microscope the fungal growth that we removed from the catfish's eye. You can see the typical hair-like uh, structures that are not branching and not septate. And they also have this terminal zoosporangia, uh, where they release infectious zoospores that can infect other fish or other damaged areas of tissue. Now, with saprolegnia, they tend to be a secondary pathogen, infecting only immunosuppressed fish or fish that have sustained damage to their skin. And in this case, with our catfish, there was the eyes. Okay. So before we go any further, we're going to add a bit more anesthetic into here. But um, what we'll do as well, uh, we've got with weight in, it's about um, 4.6 kilograms. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to give them some anti-inflammatory. So we're just going to use uh, flumixin at about half a milligram per kilogram body weight. So I've drawn out uh, 0.05 mils of the um, anti-inflammatory. So non-steroidal, so we're just gonna put it into the muscle. Yeah. In terms of um, antibiotics, because you can get secondary bacterial infections, uh, we're just gonna use well, this package is, is a bit broken, but it's uh, anrofloxacin, about five milligrams per kilogram body weight, and that works up to about half a mil. And that one we're going to give it into its salomic cavity, so I'm just going to lift up the pelvic fin, go into the salomic cavity, and get that in there. And then because he hasn't eaten in a while, what we're going to do is we're going to give it some anabolic steroids, so uh, what we're using here is Danazolo, an, anti an anabolic steroid, uh, because what we're going to do is going to tube feed him, um, some food and that will give him some energy for recovery. I'm just redirecting that needle because it's a big volume. Okay. So we'll leave him there for a little bit longer for the anesthetic to um, exert its effect and in the meantime uh, what we want to do is just maybe film this one we're gonna get some of this fish flakes so we're just gonna prepare some food for him so it's uh, tea feeding so we're just using a something that's got high um, high protein content so this one is uh, not bad so anything close to 40 percent protein would be good so just basically using your hand as a funnel that into there. Get some fluid into it by sucking in the water. Get rid of um, the air from there. You can see there's a little bit of an air bubble, so you just want to evacuate that from there. And basically, we're going to put about 5 mils into um, 
the stomach with a red tail catfish, they've got a really distendable stomach, so you can pretty much even put 10 meals, that's not a problem at all. Um, so with the tube, what you want to do is you want to insert it midline, uh, through to here, and basically his throat is about the, where the um, end of the wheel cover is. So it's about there, this beat that we actually need to put the tube in. So just insert that midline, you can feel there's a bit of resistance there. And if you put it in a bit further, uh, you know you're in, it's a soft tube so it's quite safe. And so you can put it in further, so that uh, fear of um, perforating the stomach. And then you can just squeeze that food in. Hopefully it doesn't even make it out. So when you're pulling out the tube, you can feel a bit of resistance. That's because it's throat uh, teeth. The pharyngeal teeth are sort of gripping onto that. Uh, so you know you're in the right spot. Okay, so now our patient is reasonably anesthetized. What we're going to do is we're just going to debride the surface of the eye. And then after that, we'll apply some topical um, antibiotics. We'll start with the uh, left eye. So we have a close up, you can see there's a bit of opacity. Really hemorrhagic, it's very inflamed eye. So basically, what, why we're debriding it or scraping the surface to, to get rid of any dead tissues. And so that new fresh tissue can grow. This is going to be a painful um, procedure, so you want them to be suitably anesthetized and also uh, using a scalpel blade that close um, you want to make sure that you don't slice it open if it moves so I've just uh, applied some injectable antibiotics uh, as a topical treatment and using my fish bandage here and then that's gonna hold the antibiotic where you want it. Okay. Good. And then I guess over here as well, since we've got him here, we'll also put some antibacterial in these little folds. Ammonia is a direct cell poison and it can cause necrosis of the epithelium affecting the eyes, gills and skin and since the skin is already fragile areas where it's rubbing skin against skin as you can see from the edges of the gill covers and also skin against tank as you can see from the pelvic fins and the ventral surface of the abdomen here they're forming ulcers these skin ulcers that are caused by ammonia burns can get secondarily infected. So what we're doing here is we're applying layers of antibiotic and our fish bandage. For this eye here, we have uh, evidence of infection from fungal disease, saprolegnia. So we're going to debride this fish uh, area to get rid of any infected material so that we can layer our antibiotics and fish bandage together to prevent further infection setting in. You have to be very careful that we do not cause any further damage to the cornea, uh, otherwise you could get a melting ulcer forming where the lens could pop out and you're unable to save the eye. The choice of antibiotics that we use is enrofloxacin. It's one that we can give systemically as well as topically as shown here. Uh, because it's also a broad spectrum antibiotic and not one that can cause immunosuppression like the tetracycline could do. Now we'll pop him back into the tank since his treatment is now complete. 
He's just waking up from his anesthetic, still a bit groggy. Now let's check out the biofilter setup to see why there's a problem with mutant syndrome or ammonia uh, burns. So we're checking out, we've got some layers of sponges, uh, here's our heater and the water should overflow to a second compartment. This is a fluidized bed media. Uh, this looks like K3. It looks like it, there's some bacteria growing in it because it's not completely white. Uh, so I think it just shows that the biofilter is actually a bit too new. Um, when this fluidized bed filter is moving, it should be moving, sort of tumbling around uh, quite vigorously. So additional aeration uh, wouldn't go astray in this chamber. Nitrifying bacteria are aerobic bacteria. So the additional aeration that you put in that helps with the tumbling also supplies it with extra oxygen and this will help it become more efficient at converting ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. Okay, so there's our catfish. It's sort of perked up a little bit. Um, we've done sort of halfway through a water change. We're gonna add bicarb as well as salt. And you can see he's sort of swimming around a little bit more. So keep an eye on him. We'll give you an update on how he's doing. Yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.